many times kids who have speech delays are often um, evaluated for autism and there's some debate whether they are not they are on the spectrum. Today we are talking uh, to a dad of a four-year-old who um, has been kind of on the autism journey for a while, but his son is still not diagnosed. And we are talking all about what you can do for a child who has a speech delay with or without autism. Welcome back to another video. I'm Dr. Mary Barbera, autism mom, behavior analyst, and best-selling author. Each week I provide you with a video that is going to help you hopefully in terms of turning things around, whether or not you have a child or client on the autism spectrum or just showing signs. Today, we're presenting a small clip from podcast number 184 with a dad, Vikram, and we are talking all about his son who recently turned four. There would have been other things that he would have picked up on. Um, and one of them is was the, really the speech delay aspect. So he, he wasn't saying that it is this, but he just flagged it out to us as a consideration. And so um, he was in, encouraging us to get him into play groups and all these things to help develop his social skills. Um, at that time, one of the public universities here in, in Melbourne, where I live, um, they run an autism detect center. And my wife somehow heard about it through our maternal health nurse. And so she decided to pursue it. And I thought, my wife was crazy because I thought he didn't really have any problems. And um, so we decided to go ahead with the test. Um, I'm very close to my son. I'm very involved with his life. So I did the test with him and run, ran for about three hours with a professional. And so there's a whole bunch of toys, different activities. And I thought he did really, really well. Um, but when the feedback came out, um, she was telling us that, and this took roughly about close to maybe a little less than a year for them to give us feedback for whatever reason. Oh my they gosh, a year? A little less than a year because of COVID and they didn't have professionals on site. Oh gosh. So you went for three hours and you thought he did okay. He was what, two at the time, 18 months, something like that? Uh, between two and a half to three. Oh, he was two and a half or three. And then you go and then you wait a year to get feedback on that three hour visit? Right, right. So, um, it wasn't quite a year. I was probably say about nine, yeah, nine, 10 months. Um, but wow. that was during the midst of the pandemic. So the people were on leave. Oh, gosh. So the whole situation kind of got put in the back burner and we didn't know what was going on. We couldn't get in contact with anyone. Um, finally, we were able to chase them up and get the results. And so I, either the results came up when he was between two and a half and three. I think that's when the results came out. So he probably went a little bit earlier than that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it was a bit of a challenge, and I was waiting with bated breath. I was just praying he wouldn't have autism, and she told us that they scored him on two different aspects, and you'd be very familiar with this. One was the social communication aspect, and then the other aspect was repetitive and restrictive behavior. So she said on the repetitive and restrictive behavior, he was about three years old at that time. She said she didn't observe anything um, on that angle, but on the social communication aspect, she said if she was only focusing on that, she would have concluded he had autism. And so she gave us a very, very detailed report. We were then able to show that to our pediatrician. Um, and I was over the moon because I thought, oh, he doesn't have autism. So, but that only fueled further denial in my mind because I thought, hey, the professional is saying no autism, so we're in the all clear. Um, but that wasn't really the case. Um, and so we were stuck. We didn't know what to do from this point of time, but she did tell us that signs of repetitive and restrictive behavior can come up after the age of three. And he was turning three around that time um, when we got the results. So she said, just be mindful that these sort of symptoms can come up. And so, you know, we haven't really noticed a lot. Uh, there was a bit of light switching on and off when he was around three years old before then. He would just do it over and over again. But just for two, three minutes, we asked him to stop. He would He'd move away from it. He wasn't fixed on it. Um, now he doesn't really do it at all anymore. And I, I really believe a lot of that is credit to is really your program. Um, my wife somehow, you know, she was in tears. She was really trying to figure out how to help him when I was thinking he was fine. 
And so she would stay up late at night, Google searching, trying to find stuff. And she came across your book um, and your resources online. So she never told me and she just ordered your book and your book arrived and she showed it to me. And the moment I saw the title Turn Autism Around, it just really sank deep. It just connected with me because I said, this is what I need. This is what I'm looking for because all this time I've been told that if your son is autism, you just kind of got to stick with it. And um, he, you know, that's just his life and you're going to have to accept him for how he is. But when I saw that there's hope in your book, I jumped into, I started reading the first couple of chapters and um, I said, this is it. Because out of the 10, 10 signs of autism you mentioned, I could count maybe eight for him, eight out of the 10. So that's, that's when it really hit me. I was out of denial mode at that time. I said, this is very serious. We're in serious issues here. I better do something about this. I've got to be the captain of the ship and steer him onto a better path. And so, um, so I'm so thankful your book came in a very timely manner. And then I heard uh, Michelle C's, I, I know you don't have the last name there. I yeah, came Michelle C's podcast. You heard the first one, uh, podcast 78, probably. And, yeah. then, um, and we can link these in the show notes. And then we just did a, a recap with Michelle two years after podcast 164. And we also did a white paper with Michelle's Daughter's Progress that we just published. So we can put those, all those in the show notes. But yeah, Michelle sees podcasts because like you, during COVID, when the world shut down, she was kind of caught with nothing. And so she found, she didn't find my book because actually I was writing my book and she found my <laughs> online course, which you took um, and you're in my online courses now. That's how I found you through my community. But yeah, it, it doesn't matter. The, the subtitle of the book is even more important. It's an action guide for parents of young children with early signs of autism. So your son, um, and also before we get back to your son and whether he has a diagnosis or you're waiting or what the deal is, um, I do want to make a couple of points. The, the denial that I was in, which is really outlined in my first book, Verbal Behavior Approach, um, my husband first mentioned the possibility when Lucas was 21 months old, I shut him down, told him I never, ever wanted to hear the word autism again, and then uh, went into a really deep state of denial. And that was back in 1998. He was diagnosed in 99, uh, you know, year, year and a half afterwards when he started treatment. Um, and, you know, he was, but he was making, it looked like he was okay. He was going to typical preschool. He, you know, was going to speech therapy. And back at the time, I had no idea. So we can link um, uh, the denial video blog I did, which was one of my first video blogs. We can link that. And also my interview with my husband. I don't know if you've listened to that, but we talk a lot about his perspective versus my perspective and how he dealt with me in denial, which wasn't really good because I wasted a full year, year and a half. But in the end, I do think that when in two parent households, it's very common for one to, to be in denial and the other one not to be in denial. And there needs to be something. And in this case, it was my book. When Shell C, she was searching the internet on a Facebook ad and found my online course. But, you know, you're in there uh, in the community with Michelle C, who's now a Facebook advisor and with Kelsey, who's a success story. And so you, you are experiencing and you're experiencing the success uh, that you've had so far with your son now, but he does not have a diagnosis of autism yet, right? He doesn't have a diagnosis yet. We have another test we're going for an ASD test uh, in September this year, um, 2022, right? right. <laughs> By that year. point, he'll be four. He'll be four, yes. And, um, but in the meantime, like, it doesn't matter if, he has a diagnosis or not, it, the, the exact same methods work. And about half of the people that introduce themselves in our community do not have a diagnosis yet, which is, which is, you know, um, you know, in, in some ways empowering because you're like, wow, I am reaching the people that I want. Like, 
it, it is a lot easier to turn things around, whatever that means, like, you know, turning it as good as possible, making gains, making progress, um, empowering the parents that they can do it with or without a diagnosis. Um, it's, it's always better the earlier, but it's never too late either. So, um, yeah. Do you have anything to add about that? Yeah, no. So, I mean, yeah, through this uh, community, we've obviously got to know Kelsey and Rachel and Michelle, you know, they're the, they're the main people there um, to provide support. And yes, yeah, it's just been phenomenal. You know, the Facebook community, um, these online Q and A questions, it's just fantastic because it covers all bases. I, we really feel supported through this whole journey and that helped me to go from the toddler course to the BB bundle. And so we're enjoying that a lot and I'm just constantly learning, um, changing things all the time for our kids, making sure that they're benefiting to the best yeah. of their ability. Wow. And you also have a two-year-old daughter, mm -hmm. um, almost two-year-old. So they're, they're two years apart. And you shared with me before we started that she is, is developing okay, but she is very speech delayed. And so you've been using these same techniques for her, which is, which is awesome. I hope you enjoyed that small snippet. If you did, I would love it if you would give a thumbs up, leave a comment and share it with somebody who might benefit. And for more information about how you might be able to see progress and break things down like Vikram did by um, attending a free workshop and then eventually joining our online course, but you can attend a free workshop at marybarbera.com forward slash workshop. And I'll see you right here next week.